and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silverquill. I have been eaten by a hungry manticore. It's quite pleasant. On opposite day. <laughs> I see. So, how was it? Was it good and fun on opposite day? It was like a slip and slide. The wetter. Yay. Also joining us today is Sapphire Hot Songs. Enter witty comment about the episode here. Yay. I don't really have anything. I'm sorry. We could do that. We can say, audience, fill this in. Well, my job just got easier. Yeah. <laughs> well, knowing right. our audience, they have a lot to say, but they like to hear us talk first. We're that self-centered, huh? Can't take the audience into account, Norman? How selfish. No, because when this thing published, then we'll get to read what they say. So it's kind of a wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff. I wonder how they'd react if we just said, Hey guys, we're not really going to talk about this. You go to town. Yeah, and then we'll probably <laughs> insert the comments in next week's record. You didn't, no, no, no. Bad idea. Bad idea. Ah, uh, so anyway, by our, with the intro, you can probably guess that we're going to review No Second Princess, season six, episode six, overall episode number one, two, three. Original air date on April 30th, 2016. Written by Nick Conflone and featuring characters Starlight Glimmer and Trixie. Yes, the great and powerful one has returned. All praise be Hi, her. Hi, Sephisto! Totally feature us on EQD! We got Silver and we got Trixie! Feature us now. <laughs> probably, probably. I don't think it works that way. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, this is the... Episode that we've all been waiting for. The return of Trixie. Ha ha. So I think first impressions are in order. And going backwards, Sapphire, what do you think? Well, I didn't look at the writer of this episode before watching it. Like I didn't like pause my screen in order to uh, determine who was writing this episode because the intro I liked way too much. I... I enjoyed the crap out of this episode. I I must say, it was amazing. It was, it was everything I ever dreamed of for Friendship is Magic. Even though I'm not the biggest Trixie fan, now that tell goes to you know who, Silverquill's new boss. Oh, all right. So Silver, what about you, man? Meh. Meh. Really? No, not really. <laughs> Just want to get a rise out of you. Uh. uh I- I enjoyed this. I know uh, opinions on this were very polarized. Mm. I mean, it's almost it's almost just as much fun to see uh how people react to the episode as the episode itself. Yeah. This is one of those rare times where Twilight is finally allowed to be fallible again. Uh ever since since her princess hood, they've really they haven't got to show the same level of obsessive Twilight that we've seen in the past. And it's just fun to see her acting this bizarre in many ways. <laughs> uh, I'm not as huge a Trixie fan as others. I recognize her as the first pony who showed this wasn't all going to be sugary sweet niceness. You could actually have an you could actually have a tood. Mm-hmm. But but she's not like I was not like ah oh, we're finally getting Trixie back. Oh my life is complete again. Oh my gosh. Basically, basically I was like this should be interesting. I'm. I more enjoyed this for the dynamic between our three magic users. The tug of war for Starlight Glimmer's focus, and yes, the the references to fan fan favorite characters. Uh more on that in a minute. But all in all, it was a fun fun all around. My only head scratch is Princess Celestia's role. Oh yes. Poor Princess Celestia in this one. I enjoyed the part where Celestia was having her sarcastic sigh and just, why the hell am I doing here? But at the same time, what was the point? She's probably asking the same question. But Although uh, my, well, it's not my headcanon, it's another fan of the show that I know, uh, British Ninja's headcanon, that they just couldn't get Nicole Oliver for the day. Oh no, they could. Come on. Like, Nicole Oliver is there. It's just funny. Yeah, they keep all the voice actors in a little pen in the when they're not recording. 
Uh-huh. They're called the free range actors. Oh, 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 oh. no. Maybe. At least they get free Wi Fi. I, no, no. I got no comment for that. Like, bad silver, bad. I think we broke Norman. Then I probably shouldn't go in depth about the branding process. <laughs> oh. oh. Here's what your cutie mark is telling you with a red hot poker. <laughs> uh, no. You done, Silver? <laughs> me. Silver, I love how evil you get. Uh, it's music. Okay. Moving on. All right. As for me, I like this episode. This is one of those episodes where I wasn't really expecting expecting Trixie to come back because, well, I didn't see any spoilers. It's like, huh, no second princess. And, well, just looking at this episode and just experiencing it for the first time was really cool. And seeing Trixie back was, yay, it's Trixie. Yay, she's back. Woohoo. And the whole team of not really giving second chances to... Sit evil villains is, hmm, alright, you're giving second chances to Starlight but not Trixie. Why is that, Twilight? Hmm. And it's a really good lesson. I like this episode. Well, I actually want to tackle that, that very question. So shall we dive into the spoiler territory? Indeedy. So before we go in, uh, fun facts about this episode. The original title for this episode is Old Dogs New Trixie which was changed to keep the episode plot a surprise. But yeah, it's kind of cool. Woo-hoo. Wait, what? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, the original title for this episode was called um, Old Dog's New Trixie. And Big Jim Miller stated regarding Trixie's return, we always wanted to bring her back. It was just a matter of finding a good place to do that. And, well, this is a good one. This is a good they one. They found it. Mm-hmm. Although, old dogs knew Trixie would imply the Diamond Dog should return as well. Yeah, but we yeah. did get a dog and pony show, so... Yeah. Yes, that's where we met the Diamond Dogs, but they have not returned. Yeah, true that, true that. Oh, but, well, we didn't get that title. All we got was No Second Princess, um, a pun on No Second Chances, so yay. So anyway, uh, spoilers are ahead, so if you have not watched this episode... Pause it here and go watch it. But if you have, continue on with us because we are going to jump into spoiler territories. Yay! So anyway, we start off with Twilight teaching Starlight about table placement and what it represents. Unfortunately for Twilight, she didn't hear the rest of that because she uses magic. Magic to set up the table. Uh, and I think from this point, we can already see what's the problem with Starlight. That magic is her default. That and she jumps the gun a lot. Actually, uh, there's a comic where Twi- out there where Twilight has to spend time as an earth pony. Celestia takes away her horn. Mm. And it's actually, it's a mixed bag, but I was like, what, what would that be like for Starlight? She'd go nuts. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's, whew, that's got to be not fun for Twilight. Actually, it's very entertaining for us, if that's the case. Actually, I think we sort of got that in Equestria Girls when she first got in the world. Yeah, true, true. We did got that. Oh, yeah, definitely. It was fun to watch that. Face smack, face smack, face smack. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Someone wanted to do a remix about that? I'm sure someone in the fandom has. Yo, remix. It's how they roll. <laughs> yes, indeed. I, I think personally for me, I've seen this and yeah, from this point on, we get the theme of Starlight Glimmer jumping gun and feeling that she's, well, a bit awkward with everything. So we continue on with, hey, tonight we're having Princess Celestia over for dinner and we're setting tables. So why is there an extra plating? I thought it was just the three of us. Nope. Starlight Glimmer has to find a friend. And yeah, she has to find a new friend, not the main six or main five in this case. By that night. Yes. Uh, Poor planning, Twilight. Poor planning. Oh, every pony does this. Every (laughs) pony is like, we have this major event. 
Tonight, let's get started on the planning. We have a royal wedding. You have one day to get ready. <laughs> oh, oh wow. joy. Oh, we have a new store opening. We need to set it by today. Can we not postpone it? Oh, no. The horror. The horror. Oh, no. It's like, why? Why? <gasps> Just why? Because it's a show. Uh, I don't care if it's a show. It's it's efficient and it bothers my OCD. <laughs> have fun. Uh. So after that really confusing scene for Starlight, we well we join her as her hunt for a friend. How hard is it to find friends in the most friendly town in Equestria, Ponyville? When did they get this title? I I think Sakura and Fluttershy would like to call shenanigans on that. Shenanigans. Do 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 do. do. Uh, well, probably. I don't know. We'll see. But we get probably the worst appearance for Mrs. Cake in the series yeah. so far. Yeah. Yeah, really. I noticed that. Like as soon as Mrs. Cake sort of went off, it's like, what the hell? What happened to sweet little Mrs. Cake that I just want to cuddle? She suddenly, like, went hostile when somebody apparently made a really, really fancy cake. Just, okay. That she could sell. Yeah. Pinkie Pie decides to, well, be the helper and introduce Starlight to Mrs. Cake. And like you guys said, Mrs. Cake goes off on Starlight saying, Oh my god, are you trying to steal away my business? Well, that and you, she apparently baked the egg whisk and uh, flower bag and... Whatever that other tool is into the cake because they're, they're nowhere else to be seen afterwards. Yeah. But yeah. here's what I've been saying from the start where Starlight jumps the gun really bad. She doesn't really get the chance to introduce herself to Mrs. Cake and vice versa. And she says, Ooh, can I help without getting an okay or not? So it's like, hmm, gun jumping. Right. But why, I don't get why Mrs. Cake is like, you're trying to put me out of business? Yeah, that, that's, you, that's the other one too. You, you just well, got a really fancy cake for free that you could put on display and serve. How is this not a good thing? Well, technically, if you think about it, Silver, because the cake that was made was not made by the cakes. It was made by Starlight. And if they do put it for display and sell, someone would say, a potential buyer would say, oh, I love this cake. Could you make more of it? And the cakes will have trouble because they didn't bake the cake. Uh, a good example is if you do art and let's just say I did art and people like it. So they ask you for it, but you didn't, didn't do it. It's kind of that kind of deal. Well, then you pay the, you pay Starlight to help you make uh, several cakes, which would take all of two seconds. Yeah, she has talents and she has really good talents in baking. Making talents. Mm -hmm. So after that <laughs> kerfuffle, Starlight decides to, well, I should take my leave. And Applejack decides to help her. And by pairing her up with her brother, yay, remember the last time that he got paired up, it didn't end well. And unfortunately for him, on this one, it didn't end well too. Starlight being the person that wants to control everything, cast a spell on Big Mac making him talk that's not good it is his, his pain does make me laugh as he runs away <laughs> make it stop <laughs> yeah i sort of found the random alliteration fun to watch and stuff it was amazing yes we all know that big mac here is very intelligent but he's a strong quiet type from the twilight and big mac friends forever we know that he is very smart. He knows a lot of things, but decides to keep himself quiet. And yeah, having this one, having a spell cast on him again to make him more open is not the best thing. And Applejack is, well, Applejack does not approve. And then Starlight goes on about like, like a mother trying to make her teenage daughter clean her room. It's like, ah, fine, I'll go fix it. Ugh. I find that interaction pretty hilarious. Yeah. I think this is a lesson that Starlight needs to learn. Don't cast spells on ponies, forcing them. That's not good. It didn't work out the first time you did it. Although it does make, it does add to her character, the idea, even in her flashbacks for the crystalline, 
she was always quick on the draw with magic. Mm-hmm. That's true. Magic has always been her go-to problem solver. It'll be interesting to see a future episode with her involving her not using her magics. That would be Simpson. Uh, so we continue on with Rarity. And Rarity teaching Starlight about, oh, you need to give them a good first impression with clothing and style and what's not. And the design I have in mind for you will be finished in three weeks. When's the party? Today. Yeah, ain't gonna work. So what about a hat on the discount pile? <laughs> Rarity has no Ponyville friends. That makes me kind of sad. She's such a savvy business pony, but all her social contacts are outside uh, in Canterlot and Manhattan. Mm-hmm. Well, besides the main six, but we're not counting them. Uh, maybe the Pony Tones, but I guess Starlight's not much of a singer. You mean Rarity? Well, no. Rarity's friends with the pony. Oh, tones. yeah. Yeah. Pff, I don't know. Starlight here is. Mm, well, I'm surprised that she did a gun jump for making the dress. But say, hey, that's good. That's good. Because now we it's... get to the to the ultimate freak out. We get to see Rainbow Dash trying to help Starlight with pairing her up with Spitfire. Why Spitfire though? Is my question. <laughs> Because Pitfire's the coolest Wonderbolt. She's the she's the face of the Wonderbolts. Mm-hmm. Still the why? <laughs> uh, well, who, who else are you gonna have? Know. The li- the lispiness of a Fleetfoot. Uh, Misty flies easily KO'd status. Or pie eating Sorin. Yeah, why would anybody right- want to be friends with these ponies again? I bet Rainbow doesn't want Starlight anywhere near Soren on account of the pie eating. Or, <laughs> or, or other reasons. Yeah. Hashtag ship. Yep. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Pie eating. Oh, oh my. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, so. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, have oh, that mental yeah, image in your head. <gasps> oh yeah. Oh you know, god! <laughs> you know she'd bake that pie real fast. Oh my yep. god. <laughs> Welcome back to modern society, Sapphire. And then she's served and piping hot. West Virginia at this rate. <laughs> With a glass of milk. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> it's 2% milk, baby. Oh, I'm high, so high in calcium. CRC <laughs> Brony, if you're listening to this, I'm very, very sorry. What are you guys talking about? I'm just uh, uh, talking about serving desserts. I know. You, I know. What, but what anyway. What are you thinking about? So, after Rainbow Dash wants to introduce Starlight to Spitfire, she dashes off, and Rainbow Dash asking, are you coming or not? First question out of Starlight is, what's a Wonderbolt? And priceless face over here, this is good. Then Fluttershy got short, Fluttershy got shortchanged. Yeah. Yeah, although the uh, part with Rainbow Dash, she's never heard of the Wonderbolts. It's like, oh god, that reminds me of Silver every single time I don't get a reference. <laughs> you got the pie reference just fine. Yep, yep. Yeah, but I mean like movie references and crap like that. Ugh. But yeah, Fluttershy did get the short change. But Angel Bunny is enamored with Starlight. That's rare. Actually, that would make sense. Why? Considering Angel Bunny is the evil overlord bunny. Mm. And, you know, how Starlight used to be, so I guess it works. Reformed evil attracts current evil. <laughs> yep. Oh, wow. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense, makes total sense. Yeah, but poor Fluttershy, she didn't have any lines in this episode at all. She Well, she had gasps and sighs. Mm-hmm, true that. Well, while, while, while eating pie. <laughs> True that. After all the fail attempts, Starlight's stressing out and walking through the Ponyville Park. And, well, what do magic users do when they stress out? They scream at the top of their lungs without being not stressed. And, yeah, she dashes off and heads to the spa. And I think this is the first time we get to see the spa in all its glory from the outside. Is it? We've seen it from the outside before. 
uh, and green isn't your color. Has it been mm-hmm. like this? Because I don't really remember. Well, having watched uh, a more recent episode, Applejack's Day Off, that is a TARDIS yes. building. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? They, that tiny little building has like miles of piping, mm-hmm. rooms, and stalls. Yeah, so I, I saw. They apparently have a huge basement. Yeah, think no, about it. They, they have TARDIS technology. It's much bigger in the inside. <laughs> oh it's my smaller, god, please stop. It's smaller on the outside. <laughs> oh, that's novel. <laughs> yeah. So this. Okay, I'll, I'll accept that. So deciding to relax, Starlight goes to the spa and get a hoof of care, facial, and massage. And talking, well, talking about her problems and, well, deciding, hey, this pony who I got no idea who it is, has the same problem and understands me. This is great. Yay! We can be buddies. Just like what Twilight wanted. And talking about Twilight, we are greeted with her OCD of the next thing after friendship is proper silverware placements. Yay! Priorities, Twilight. You really need to check them. Seriously. That just... Oh, God. What? Proper silverware placement. That's apparently the most important thing rather than all the friggin' fresh friendship she lessons she's probably learned throughout two years. Well, after, after friendship. Well, plus there's well, a lot of bonding experience over setting up that silverware in the past. There was the Great Spoon Incident of 18 to Kitty 2. Oh, no, we, we don't mention about the Spoon Incident. We don't mention about it. What? I mean, you get Fluttershy and Twilight together, and then, the, you know, there's a little shared spoon. Oh, uh, and then Carol's Whispers plays. Oh, no, man. No. Oh. But anyway, Starlight Glimmer comes in saying that, Twilight, I found a friend. She's great. And powerful. Great? Powerful? <laughs> and she's back. Hey, the great powerful Trixie. Guess and who's she's... back? Back again. <laughs> Trixie's back. Tell a friend. Oh, no. I, I didn't see the chat, but I'm guessing people were blowing up saying that, oh my god, Trixie's back. Woohoo. And what, let's just ask real quick, what is it about Trixie, who has had only two appearances in the whole series? You know, this is a good question. And it goes the same for most of the characters, like, for example, Gilda. And I don't know, it could be, from my personal opinion, it could be the fan work, like the fan fiction, the fan art, and so on. Well, for me, it would be the design of Trixie and that as a character. You know, with Gilda and Trixie, I remember them because of their designs. They stand out. Like, Trixie is completely blue, and we all know how I'm about blue when it comes to that color. Uh-huh. Uh, and I just really thought her design was interesting when I first saw her on screen. It's like, I don't like this personality, but she looks too cute to paint completely. But I like her personality. But also the thing with Trixie is that, well, she's a fan favorite. Like I mentioned before, after she came on, she had that personality of, well, like Silva said, there's jerks. In this universe, and not everything sunshine and rainbows. Sunshine, lollipops, and moon dreams. Yeah, that da. Lollipop, lollipop, lo la 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 la. I forgot the words. Wow. But um, bum. I know this song. I just forgot the words for a second. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anywho, so after Twilight discovers Starlight's new friend is Trixie. She wants a word with Starlight, saying that probably Trixie's not the first friend you should have because of your history and her history. Um, two bad guys in the same room probably won't end well. The okay. thing is, it's it sort of feels weird that Twilight would go on such a, uh, you know, ugh, like trying to get Trixie... To not be friends with Starlight. Because I'm, like, still editing my crystalline review and I'm being slow as hell. And I remember from the beginning of the first episode, she's all... 
Twilight was all, oh, I don't dwell on the past, and neither should you. Well, you're kind of dwelling on the past now, Twilight. Are we going back to what about Discord? <laughs> uh, Discord is a different story altogether. But yes, Silva? I want to take the opposite view. That it's not dwelling on the past, it's having concern, but it's having a legitimate concern for Starlight's progression. Trixie... Well, yeah, and I can understand that. In a, in a way, Trixie isn't doing any better, like with that smug look and she's just messing with all the silverware. I see Twilight's side, but yet I don't agree with her completely. It's mm-hmm. completely mixed for me. It's like friggin' Civil War, where... I can't help but agree yet disagree with what your motives are in. <laughs> let, let Silver finish first. He has a point. The big criticism in all this is that uh, you look at their resumes. Trixie, she hosted a magic party one night, and then two idiots brought a nurse mi- minor into town. Mm-hmm. Then she came back, and under the influence of, an in- of a magical doodad that drove her insane, conquered Ponyville. Mm-hmm. Starlight Glimmer manipulated an entire town, conquered it, turned it into a cult, then tried to break time. Paradoxically, Ponyville has seen more of Trixie's shenanigans than they have Starlight's, so that's part of the reason why Trixie has such a bad t- rap in this town. So I get what people say that, if anything, Starlight should have the greater guilt for past actions, but Trixie has never tried to reform her attitude. And here's Starlight trying to very much to be a different pony. And she's in a very emotionally vulnerable state. Trixie, with her ego, may indeed be the worst possible introduction for someone so fragile and easily led astray. However, Twilight is not totally uh, selfless in this viewpoint. She also wants, she is still the student wanting to impress her teacher. So she wants... Trixie, she wants uh, Starlight to have a very respectable guest uh, to impress Celestia. So there is a note of selfishness creeping into Twilight's actions as well. But I actually enjoy that because, you know, these characters are fun because of their flaws, because of their temptations. It's not 100% one way or the other, as one would expect in a kid's cartoon. Mm, true that, true that. All of these ponies here are not wrong. Starlight Glamour being very vulnerable at this moment found a friend in Trixie. And Trixie being the same too, well, they bond because of, well, Ponyville doesn't understand us. We're evil and we're bonding because we want to change but nobody's giving us a second chance. Twilight here is concerned because, well... I know Trixie. She's kind of evil, but she's reformed. But I'm putting up my guards because I don't trust She's her. She's not that evil, though. Yeah, but the thing is, like, Twilight here is kind of... Well, I, I would say it's not fair because Trixie's evilness came from the influence of a magic amulet. And, well, technically, yeah, we'll, we'll get an explanation later on. But still, um, can we move on to the second act? Sure. Sure. All right. So, after the castle and Twilight fixing silverware, we get to see them two ponies setting up the stage for two nights show that really, really working tight, long title and still a work in progress title show. So, they're setting up the stage and Trixie kind of opened up to Starlight saying that I'm really jealous of Princess Twilight because she's better at magic than me like I, I I was really jealous I came to town with a magic amulet trying to one up her but she one up me back so yeah I'm really really jealous in cases like that I wouldn't blame her I guess it sort of seems unfair Trixie and like with the magical ability that's one thing but Twilight has been loaded from birth she lived in Canterlot She had parents who didn't seem to have any worries about financial needs. And, you know, she teaches under Celestia. Then there's Trixie, who's a show pony. And yeah, she has her ego and whatnot, and that's why I love her. But she travels around in a wagon. I see why she would be a little bit jealous, even if the magic and one-upping didn't come into play. That's how I see it anyway. I've 
Yeah, nothing to add to that. Twilight has always been the 1%. She doesn't rub it in anyone's face. She doesn't act like that makes her instantly superior. I think at some point there is that, there is a cultural divide between her and Trixie and not understanding why Trixie might feel jealous. I mean, Twilight, you've got the extra room. Why not invite Trixie to spend, spend time in the castle? But then we get to the fan service. Fan service. Oh my. What do we get? What do we get? We get DJ Pwn3, who's actually been named this season. Yeah, I mean, they always named her before, right? Mm, as far as I know, the only time they said DJ Pwn3 was during the uh, the commercial that said Equestria Girls. Ah, that one. Yeah. The, so- the song parody. Yeah. I was told that you're not supposed to say the three. No. Is that, like, mm. how it works or no? It depends. If you want to talk about lead speak, yes, you just say pony. But if you, well, you just want to have fun with it, you say pony tree. It's like, depends on who you're talking to. And, like, right now it doesn't really matter because it's fun. I, I'm i sort of, like, uh, asking because I did a fuck to the face with Ronnie Buck on this episode. And he was complaining, like, oh, you're not supposed to say the, you know, the number. I, I honestly don't know anything about DJ, so that's kind of why it's like, okay, ugh, all right, I'm good. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Either or, personal preferences, and, well, if the director from the show didn't correct the voice actors, yeah, that, it's, not, it's not that bad. Well, at the same time, in the latest episode for uh, Applejack Stay Off, schedule kind of slid through, so... Yeah. What's that? Schedule? Schedule. Schedule. Instead of schedule. Rarity's forced accent. Ah. But here's the thing that I've heard online. In fact, Big Jim Miller had to reply to tweets about this. He's been dealing with a lot of brouhaha on Twitter, it seems. Mm Mm-hmm. Poor guy. Fans instantly say, oh, they featured a character that fans like. They're obviously pandering. This is bad. Oh, no. Uh, I feel like Wait, how is it bad to show a, a character that fans really enjoy? And more to the point, do the does the character serve a purpose? And in the case of that one music pony, mm-hmm. and that one cross-eyed pony, <laughs> yes. and, and that one not a pony, <laughs> uh, they actually do serve a purpose. They look, one one is not hearing anything. One is getting slammed into into uh, signs and falling down, and well, poor Cranky is just looking very uh, grumpy, sitting there feeding the birds <laughs> with a bird that is interested in air for some reason. And I like, you know what? That that without a word, even if I didn't know these characters, they highlight reasons why they're bad alternatives. It is kind of funny. I think they do serve a purpose to the humor. It's not just having them. For fan service, it's fan service to accomplish a point. Mm-hmm. And it's really fun to have them on too. It's not bad. I mean, I for one enjoy the fan service, especially if Derpy's there, especially in season one and th- sorry, season two, three, or f- and four, when we get to see the derps. Like if she's flying around doing something, I enjoy it. It's like a West Waldo kind of thing. And here she's highlighted. That's cool. For me, I really didn't care, like, about the whole fan service thing. I've never really been a fan of background ponies like a bunch of other bronies are. But I wasn't, like, saying, oh, my God, it's fan service. They're trying to pander us. Ugh. It's all going down to... That's not a word. From here. Oh, God, sweet. Uh. <laughs> I don't care. It's fine. It doesn't bother me, but at least they served a purpose ra- in here rather than Slice of Life. Slice of Life is one of those episodes where it's all about the cameos. It's all about the ponies, backgrounds. And- I know. I'm not completely... My thoughts on Slice of Life are really, really back and forth between each other. It's really difficult to explain. It's just, at least, like, they had a point to being there, like Silver said. That's, I was kind of sort of skeptical over how 
like, when I first saw DJ Pond 3, it's like, oh, no. Oh, wait, she has a purpose. All right, I'm good. Moving on. Yeah, still, um... <laughs> After we see Twilight trying to manipulate friendship on Starlight, we get to see the plan or magic trick that Trixie wants to pull off. And that's called the Moonshot Manticore Mouth Dive. Ooh. The only pony who's ever pulled it off is the Great Hoofdini. Yay. And this trick involves you getting into a cannon being shot out of it into the mouth of the manticore and appearing in a box on stage, unharmed. Yay. What I find sort of odd about this is that, one, we finally learned Trixie's inspiration, but have you noticed that the historical figures are you that inspire our heroines usually are male? We have Star Swirl the Bearded, Wind Rider for a time, and now Hoofdini. I just find that a curious thing. That's good, right? Well, Silver, you're my inspiration, so it... What? I, Women I, can't I, be influenced by men? Is that what you're saying? Far from <laughs> it. I'm I'm just surprised because the show... You know, there's always the, the talk about, you know, the show is aimed at girls. And usually in modern time, in the modern context of the show, the girls usually interact with other girls. The girls are the achievers. Guys are in the world, but they're not really the central focus. So I just find it curious, oh, these historical figures. It's an interesting balance. I'm more than welcome to it. That is something I haven't noticed before until you pointed it out. That's cool. I mean, okay, there's still the six heroines of a heartswarming tale. Uh Uh, I'm trying to remember from the cutie map whether or not the the Metalworks pony, if they used a male or female pronoun. Metalworks. Which one was that again? Uh, it's the, it was a pony that Starlight claimed made the, the staff oh, on Mark. Oh, a male. Oh, it was a male. Okay. Curiosity. It's something that just dawned on me and I'm not really sure what, if anything, it should mean, it could mean. It's probably one of those situations. Really, maybe back then, um, Equestria was more dominated by male instead of female, but now it's the other way around because of, eh. Well, it's just, it's just a theme I'm beginning to notice. Which is something cool. Like I didn't notice. Thank you for pointing it out, Silver. I try. That's why I'm here. Yay. Silver uh, is always right. That's all. Oh, if if only I could get people to follow that philosophy. <laughs> My video comment section would be a lot less interesting. <laughs> but yeah, Trixie wants to jump into a manticore's mouth. That's nice. I remember having this question that I sort of had to analyze by myself and answer over. Why she couldn't teleport out of the mouth herself. Then I sort of realized, like, later on down the line, maybe that teleporting is more of an advanced magic. Oh, super advanced. Because as far as I know, only... Let's see here. Four ponies have accomplished it at this point. Celestia. Twilight. uh, Sunset Shimmer. And now Starlight Glimmer, all very advanced magic users. Yeah, I had to, like, ask myself that question, well, why couldn't Tricky... Tricky! Tricky, why I like it. Why couldn't Tricky, like, teleport out of the mouth herself? But then I came to that conclusion, oh, it's advanced. Random yeah, well, thought I had to answer myself. Well, a lot of fans for a long time had the headcanon that Trixie can teleport, and no, it's we were sort of conveying more power upon her than she had. Mm-hmm. I've always seen Trixie as a stage performer than a power user like Twilight. Because from her first appearance on stage, when she was doing her tricks, like manipulating rope, uh, what else, doing stuff on stage, all those things are stage magic. And even Starlight pointed this out, like she is a really good stage magician. And... No matter how you compare Twilight and Trixie, Twilight may be powerful and all that, but when you put her up on stage, she's going to crack under pressure and not perform well in her tricks or magic acts. With Trixie here, well, you put her up on stage, she'll eat it up and do whatever it takes to entertain the crowd. 
Although, Silver, back to your one statement, like, um, well, we sort of overestimate her power. I think she overestimates her own power because she's the great and powerful Trixie. I think we somehow fell into the mix, too. The reason she does that is stage performers, they have to be grandiose. They have to be boastful just to make a statement or just to be out there. Have you not? I know. Yeah, have you not seen the other reviewers out there when they say I know. things? Yeah, I know. Trust me, I I did a lot of research before I joined the analysis community. About a year's worth. Silver can tell you all about it. <laughs> Being boastful and whatnot for a stage performer is kind of part of the job. So after explaining tricks and how to do, we get Trixie inviting Starlight to be her assistant. Yay! And unfortunately, tricks need to be done tonight when Twilight has her dinner. Uh, oh well, we shall see who Starlight will pick, either Trixie or Twilight. The guild tripping really pissed me off though. That's the only thing that pissed me off throughout the episode. So who was laying on the greater guilt trip? Because I think both Twilight and Trixie employ that tactic against the very vulnerable Starlight Glimmer. Considering Trixie was being over dramatic, I'd say Trixie. Like, if only I could survive this trick! Ah! And you're the only one who can help me! Ah! <laughs> I think Trixie implied the bigger effect be as well. Starlight went with Trixie because she felt really bad. And then there's me who's like, uh huh. Sure. Well, it's true, but she did need to perform the show that night. But here's. Here's a good compromise. Like, here's a good compromise. Maybe it's the adult in me talking, but couldn't have Twilight invited Princess Celestia to watch the show? She could have, but that would require Twilight to be the adult in this, which, well, she is not. <laughs> She's trying to be, but she, again, you know, the, you know, the next real stage of Twilight's development would be saying no to Celestia. Oh. For, have we seen a no from Twilight to Celestia ever? Oh, never. Oh, that'll be cool. All right, and talking about Celestia, yay, dinner party! Yeah, dinner party. Yeah. Poor Celestia with... is all I can say. <laughs> poor, okay, no, no, I'm I'm not going with poor Celestia here because I'm more like, who is this? Who is this pony that looks like Celestia? but is bored, unengaging, and checking out silverware rather than having a conversation with the three ponies, one of whom is waving quite friendly. The other looks quite good with a bird on its head. Not a pony, but uh, basically, Celestia has always been pretty easygoing. This tension is so not her character. True. I, I, it could be the word I'm looking for, out of character, which we really don't like to use on the show, but in this case, it's valid because, well, Celestia, in my eyes, could make any moment or any event memorable. And even if she doesn't like it, she'll pretend to be, well, as a certain bum critic would say, this is the greatest party I've ever had in my life. So yeah, that would be Celestia's case. But no, in this one, we get to see the tension of, oh my god, this is the most boring party of my life. Oh, please, someone. Uh, please, Tarek, please, Chrysalis, do something. Oh, please, Discord, do something. And I've, I've made mention uh, in a few videos, Celestia this season, she's had actually more appearances, but she seems less empathetic. A baby is born, well, in addition to the royal family, and all she says is, oh, it's a new alicorn. <laughs> they visit Twilight during Dragon Quest. It's like, oh, someone's always needing our help. I don't believe you. <laughs> oh, yes. And, and now here she's, she seems to be losing her zeal for life. <laughs> oh, the, I don't know. Maybe here's the thing where I think that a good opportunity is lost because you could have done so much with Celestia in all of those scenes. Like, okay, I know the appearance of a new Elecorn baby is something wonderful and magical, but you could at least make her go, oh, they're so cute, goo goo gaga. And 
and then another baby is born. That's super serious. And in the dragon episode, what was it again? Um, Goblet of Fire. Goblet of Fire. We could have at least said Celestia saying, Ah, oh, the dragons, I remember them fondly. This happens before. Sorry, Twilight, but we cannot help. We are needed elsewhere. I don't believe you! And this one. Although something sort of tells me, and this is going to be a very, very far stretch, maybe the writers got sick of everybody going, we need more Celestia episodes, so they decided to feature her more, but they didn't really care, so they mm. kind of reflected that through Celestia. No, I don't agree with That's that That's my statement. very, very far out there headcanon. No, I, uh, that, I don't agree. Uh, I'm sorry, but that's right up there with Bruce Ninja saying they can't get her voice actor. That's a very bold assumption. Yeah. Exactly. And I don't believe it, but if that were true, I wouldn't be surprised. Personally, for me, this is all the writer's fault. For example, this dinner party scene, it's played up for laughs. It's, it's meant to be awkward because, well, it's funny. Awkward moments like this are funny if done right. And yes, it's done right. It is funny. It is very awkward. And Twilight needs to go and see something in the kitchen. Yes. So, it is funny. Does it put Celestia in a good light? No, it doesn't. So, that's the most unfortunate part for Celestia in this role. And then, finally, we the truth comes out. Oh, the horrid truth. That one expression for Starlight when she realized that Trixie was in a way using her. That's me when I sort of figure out when somebody's only using me for my quote-unquote horse fame. Like, if it's somebody that I'm really close to, and I find out they don't actually care about me, they just care about, like, you know, using me, I'd have the same expression. Mm -hmm. To recap, Twilight's gone looking for Starlight in town and found Starlight in... Trixie stage show. So, yay. Recap done. And everything that Trixie's saying here is out of, well, the first thing that comes out of her mind. And honestly speaking, Trixie has had a great time bonding with Starlight. And the whole thing, one-upping Twilight, uh, making Starlight pick who she likes is an additional bonus. But honestly, that doesn't matter. All that matters is that Trixie found a friend. A friend that accepts her for who she is and not what she's done. And here, her breaking down and feeling bad at the whole situation makes Trixie sad. And, oh, that really, really sucks. And then we get to the most uncomfortable part for a lot of people. Trixie tries to go through with the manticore jump. And a lot of people are likening this to suicide. Mm, well, here's the thing. I've always said this once and I say it again. The show must go on. <laughs> but if you're pulling off this trick, I a crumba. Well, uh... Did Norman turn into Bart Simpson? Just for a minute. I'm sure it's <laughs> temporary. Don't have a cow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm of a similar mindset, Norman. I'm, I'm trying to read up on this because people do want to have a discussion. Mm -hmm. But there are people who have, who suffer spontaneous, uh, suicidal thoughts. And if you can deny them access to the means, they'll quick, they'll snap out of it on their own. You know, it, it, it comes and goes. Mm -hmm. And then there are people who are, who plan this well in advance. But there are, in both cases, Warning signs, uh, a sudden, a sudden upsurge in positive attitude, uh, trying to sort of settle accounts with people before the act. That's not really explored. So I think this is a case where people are using the show as an allegory for their own thoughts, which is what good stories can do. But it's not a view I personally share. In my eyes, and this is quite terrifying, uh, you have a heartbroken individual who's lost a relationship, and in order to try and get that relationship back, she's putting herself in mortal peril. Hmm. Who does that sound like? Oof, Princess Peach? I'm thinking Bella Trixie. 
Oh, gosh. Bellatrixie, who's that? Well, let's see oh, here. Bellatrixie f- with Twilight. <laughs> I know. Yes. I, I hear don't... it, but I don't get, like, you, the origins you, of that. You've got no idea. Oh, God. What? Well, I get that it relates to the episode, but no, I've no, never... No, no. Huh. You're <laughs> thinking of the wrong Twilight. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> it clicked. Come on, Bella Swad. She she gets dumped, so she starts driving herself off cliffs mm. just to hope Jacob will come rescue her. Oh God! Oh my gosh! Please uh. stop! I, I mean, have to no, no, no. my entire middle school life. I don't need any more. Mm. Okay, I do like what you're saying here. Silver. I mean, I do see it and I kind of get the point. And yeah, I mean, I do see it because in the Twilight movies, especially book two, Bella did do a lot of crazy stunts just to get the vampire back. And in this scene here, well, it's the same thing. Kind of ironic, really, but yeah. That was in New Moon, wasn't it? Book two, I don't know what it's called. I yeah. Know, yeah, New Moon. Yeah. Although the best part is that Starlight was affected by the Crystal Heart. She was sparkly for a while. <laughs> oh my god. No! She can't, she can't be a sparkly pony, so Trixie wants her sparkly pony to come back to her. So she's gonna fire herself out of cannon to Manticore. It's not suicidal, but it's pretty messed up. Silver, you're enjoying this, aren't you? Immensely! <laughs> a little bit too much. I am the only thing, all- the only reason why I read New Moon at all was because of the cover. It had a flip pretty flower, that's all I know. The, oh, I am just envisioning all oh, the people listening to this and going, no, Silver, why are you Ah, oh, no. no. Uh, okay, but on a serious... Kind of like how we are now. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> but on a serious matter... Way too much fun. I know. But on a serious matter, what you mentioned earlier before with this could be an allegory to, well, suicide and whatnot, it's there, like, it's worth mentioning, but honestly, we're not the right people to talk about this. I, I don't think we're in the right mindset to talk about this, too. I blame Silver. Nah, but I seriously blame that we're not psychiatrists, we're not professionals at talking about things like that. And personally, we talked about the five stages of grief mm, and thanks for the memories. Well, those are five stages of grief, but this is something more in depth with Serious. a lot of yes. With. Grief is serious. Not true. Well, yeah, but at the same time, suicide is a very delicate subject. Mm-hmm. Kind of like depression, in a way. Like, if you have this, then, well, there's different types of depression, but it's one of those things where you need to, like, call somebody if you're feeling this way. And don't just let it, you know... Stay silent. It's, I don't know how to explain this. <laughs> Basically, I believe you can use this show to seriously discuss what does it mean to talk about suicide and what what makes it a good or a poor allegory as people are, are trying to use it. It's true we are not psychiatrists. We can read the words of psychiatrists mm-hmm. to get a better, more rounded view. But I, I'm not crazy about the idea that you can't even address the topic unless you have a doctorate. Otherwise, you were... Well, we should, anyway. Like, if we have to, like, discuss suicide in that sense, then we should. It's... But honestly speaking, um, we're not ready for it. We don't... We didn't read up on the topics. It's like going into a blind discussion and suddenly discuss about Michael Bay and we're not ready to discuss all the good things he have. So, yeah. Sure, sure we are. That's- Word? Shots and uh, lots of money. There you go. That's the only two things he has <laughs> right. Oh, uh, well. Yeah, but still, uh, anything more on this topic? Just that, I, ironically, though I'm arguing that for the right to talk about it, I don't believe this is a good allegory for suicide. No, it's, it doesn't. It's just a connection between Twilights. Mm-hmm. Dun, dun, 
<laughs> I guess what Norman was trying to get at, like, we shouldn't be talking out of our... That's not a word! What I'm thinking, he's trying to tell us, Silver. Let's like, talk more about Trixie and her sparkly friend. Yay! Oh. Twilight Sparkle and... <laughs> Uh, sparkly sunset. But anyway. Sparkly starlight. Mm. Oh. Who, say, who comes in to save her? Their friendship is reunited, which means that Bella Swan was right. <laughs> no, she's not. But hey, um, this is a surprising move because we get to see Trixie being disoriented and, well, messed up. Did the Manticore chew? Nope. Uh, it's pretty much a... Swallowed her whole. Swallowed her whole. Hmm. All right. So, poor Fluttershy. Like, oh, she's all nervous and scared and fainting. Huh. Oh, yes. Well, people people did point out, oh, she tamed a manticore last time. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, but you know something bad's going to happen with the manticore. It's there on stage roaring. Fluttershy knows she can't intervene because mm-hmm. it's the show. Uh, yeah, I could see her totally being shocked. Yeah, scared and, and to death. Scared to death, praying that the sparkly starlight will come save her, her endangered friend. I'm just gonna keep writing this. <laughs> yeah, you you can write it up. You're you're going to have a ball during your after the fact for this episode, huh? When I'm that alre- comes in like two years. <laughs> I already have a, a shtick planned for it. Oh wow, I can't wait. But anyway, um we do see that the trick was successful and Trixie's up on stage saying um thank you to all the audience and thank you to my assistant and my BFF. Yay. And they close down the curtain. But before we go to that, I want to point out that the Manticore is not wild like he's up on stage he's being very he's behaving that's the word i'm looking for he's behaving well oh no i think it's a pyramid scheme (laughs) there was a a trick where you uh illusionists would fake catching a bullet in their teeth Mm -hmm. and several illusionists lost their lives because they tried to use an actual gun oh god no so here's hoofdini doing this trick with the manticore swallowing him. Here's a manticore helping Trixie for this trick. Now there'll be other illusionists who try to do this straight up and the manticore is going to get like free dinners for a year. <laughs> no, yeah, true that, but, but if you take a look see at... <laughs> what, you're, you're agreeing with me? Yeah, why not, right? <laughs> Norman, are you sure you want to agree with me of all people? <laughs> well, I've yeah. Yes, Why not? Silver, because you're always right. Oh, so so my Twilight <laughs> analogy is correct. Yeah, I agree. Ooh. Sadly. No, but still, um, the the reason why I kind of agree, or <laughs> uh, terrible joke, but the reason why I'm saying that the Mentecor's behaving is at the last scene, uh, before the epilogue, we get to see the Mentecor bow down. So it's like, hmm, this Mentecor, where did Trixie get him? It looks different, but maybe it's this redesign of the one from the series premiere. Yeah. And here's the thing where I'm just thinking, if Trixie really was the type of pony who do a lot of preparation before any show, she could have went to Fluttershy to convince her to get a mentor to help her with the trick and not kill her during the stunt and get Starlight to teleport her into the box. I mean, there's a lot of prep work in magic shows. And I'm seeing here that Fluttershy is not in in the act. So where did Trixie get the Manticore? Did she went to the Everfree and get a Manticore? Or is that Manticore a changeling? Actually, there's a there's a discount Manticore rental place, Mantelot. Ah, uh, I see. Sir Mantelot. Or better I... yet, you... It's called a U roar. Oh. <laughs> so at the epilogue, we get to see Starlight and Trixie bonding, having good fun. And Trixie and Twilight comes in saying that she was wrong, and I, I'm sorry. And you, you guys are really good friends. And fireworks comes out, and yeah, gag of the show. Everybody being bored. And Cranky says, "How do you get your hair to do that all the time?" <laughs> L'Oreal. Or and maybe it's Maybelline. Okay, I'm good. 
And Celestia just rolls her eyes like, it's a mane, not hair. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. But yeah, the, that's, it was an awkward joke to end because again, we're like, this is not the Celestia I know. Celestia would have been more entertained. Wow, a pony nearly died? What fun! Yay. <laughs> and with that, the episode ends. And it ends on that awkward joke. So, I believe his final thoughts. And we go in reverse again. Seppi, what do you think? Uh, do I have to? Yes, you do. Fine. It was a good episode. Okay, Silver, your turn. <laughs> you don't elaborate? <laughs> no, I don't oh, feel like wow. a... All right. <laughs> Seriously. From ups- I, I think I went through everything <sighs> throughout this whole entire episode is the thing. <laughs> all righty then. And I like keeping it short. All righty then. And Silver, what about you, my good man? A lot of fun with this episode. The the fact that no one's totally in the right or wrong. Uh, fun appearances by guest characters. Fun moments with the cast. The only thing I really didn't enjoy was Celestia. Of course, Celestia, she's just getting the short end of the stick. But now I can drive everyone nuts with another Twilight analogy and not that Twilight. <laughs> The other yeah, Twilight. I think it's worth it, alright? I will call it my swan song. <laughs> oh. oh, God, I feel the pain. Ouch. As for me, I like this episode. This episode speaks out to me. Like, it's something where we're supposed to give people a second chance, but people don't trust other people. And we do get to see this with Twilight. And... She says that she's given Trixie the second chance, but honestly, she didn't. And the whole scenario here with how things are done, how it's written, is really good. I like it. Except for Celestia's part, which is, well, like Silva said, a missed opportunity. She could have done a lot in this episode. And like I mentioned before, it would be interesting to have Princess Celestia watch the act unfold in front of them and yeah we didn't get that but still it was a good episode all around as a bonus treat to you guys at home i've read a fan fiction that's involving this one episode it picks up where the episode ends and the fanfic is called twilight sparkle you have some explaining to do and it tells a story about well princess celestia being really angry at Twilight for ditching her to go and find Starlight and leaving her three guests in the castle doing nothing and hungry. And I'll link it into the show notes so people can have a good read. And it's fun. It's really fun. So I think with that um, episode is, well, we're done, right? Yeah, that's the long and the short of it. All righty then. Pretty much. All righty then. So, for next week's episode review, we are going to touch upon the comics again. Yay! So, next week we are going to, well, review My Little Pony, Friends Forever, issue 25. Written by Barbara Randall, art by Brenda Hickey, color by Heather Breckel. And it tells the story of Rainbow Dash and Twilight Sparkle. Should we give them the synopsis here or later on? Later, Later on. on. Let's, Let's keep it a surprise. So anywho, with that, we'll take our leaves. Um, Before we officially take our leave, I need to tell people at home that this show you're listening to right now is available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Links are going to be in the description below for you to subscribe. So now you can take us everywhere you go on your Apple device or Android device. And you can hear Silver talk about how this episode is related to Twilight. Yes. The other Twilight. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So links are going to be in the show notes. I hope you do subscribe because it helps us help you. And it's fun. It's fun. Anyway, so I have been Norman Sanzo. I'm part of Team Trolling. <laughs> and I'm part of Team Kick the Trollers, but uh, I don't know. Oh, I'm... I was Team Captain America, now I'm Team Iron Man. Uh, We'll see you guys next week with another fun episode. See ya. Adios. Sparkle, sparkle, bye bye 
you believe what they did to Captain America? Wow. Oh, I, I'm hoping they'll do a, a double twist in short order.